I am Jessica Holyfield, a professional dance choreographer and dance educator based out of the southeast of the United States, and we are here taking a second look at Devil Swan. This is the full version, and I didn't know that there was two separate versions until some of you guys let me know, which I appreciate, and I'm excited to dive in and actually see the full range of what it's going to be, just like we've seen contemporary and Korean dance at this point, and knowing who our features are, I'm really, really excited. So let's go ahead and check it out. The band-aids, like the, that tape is so funny. Every time, beautiful. Yeah, these little feathers right here. I get them. I think this, I like a sleeve option could have possibly have been really cool. Yeah, there it is. A nice little beep beat in the back. Beautiful cannon. Why was that? Man, they did a speed, like a cinematic speed change on it, which I get, but wow. This section bodies, guys. This section right here. I love it. Ugh. Ugh. Yuchan, he stuck out here too. I guess he's my preference at this time when it comes to movement quality based on how the choreography is structured. Man. Oh, that porter bra was gorgeous. Beautiful. Wow. Wow. Okay. When it comes to all three of the concepts, this one I think was the most complete. I also think our lead bodied, bodied his role so well. But also, we got to admit, part of that is going to be how it was shot. I really think the contemporary one 
was so unfortunate in how it was shot and it's really not the fault of really the dancers unless the dancers are the ones calling it which they shouldn't because they're in it and it's so much harder to call shots when you're in the routine but i'm telling you yu chan stuck out to me in a great way when i saw him in the very very first one that section that I brought him up again on was definitely what caught in my head. But yeah, I will say how they did this very, very well structured. And it takes a team on this. So the ensemble did their role, held it down, created uniformity. So we're going to probably treat it overview because a lot of this we've already kind of dived into. Like, come on, beautiful, elegant, just as what we've talked about. Nothing crazy. The reveal right here. Now I do appreciate the an the uh, like the angel swan actually getting more screen time. I think that was so interesting. How like it felt so obvious in the first consolidated one that the devil swan was a bigger role, and it still feels that way. But for our main dancer to be in black. When the outlier is the white, normally, the fact that he still garnered your attention shows the power of his captivation and movement quality. He was the right choice. But also, once again, could very simply be because of the camera shots, too. We gotta chalk it up to that. Look at that Rana Jam. Oh my god. Yes, and I think I mentioned that, too, whenever we saw it. It's just such a beautiful line right here. They bodied their role so well. It was such a great call. Lean, lean, lean over. Midnight hour. Yeah, and honestly, getting Mian from Idol to be on the track, it's just really nice. That right there, yeah, all this is nice. Range, I would say the ensemble, the best ensemble out of all of them was the Korean dance, but I'll say they, they, they take the second. I would say the ensemble contemporary, very underwhelming. A lot of notes there, but this is really nice. Ensemble, though, if you think about it, in the structure of ballet, we do, we're used to these hierarchies, right, within the structure of the work force of it. So that's why, to me, it feels that it makes the most sense in the conversion, because this hierarchy, you know, you have your ensemble, they know that. Like, the ensemble is what most people do, and then they have the opportunity for, like, the demi-soloist, and then you got your principal, right, in soloist roles. So that's why for me, there's, there's a chance that the structure of this just feels more complete or it feels more productive in the function of everyone's roles because it's so normal in the ballet world. Maybe that's a reason. In contemporary, you can kind of pull whatever, but I don't know as much about contemporary companies as I do about ballet companies. So you guys tell me. I'm curious about that. I love that. Beautiful. Hishane's. We love that choice with the, the coupe. Really nice. I love everybody. So freaking good. Beautiful. All the positions are clear, readable. Also, you have your textures, great force, great energy. And the choreography to complement the solo is really nice. He also has a spotlight. Come on. It's clean. You're just dealing with the black and whites with neutrals with a, with a really nice, just simple background. Couple cabriol. I'll bring the black swan. Nice. I still really like that canon where they go and they transition around. Yeah, that right there. That's just a beautiful pan shot to get these. Yeah. Intensity is nice. Beautiful lines. I think that middle line was a little bit unrefined there. I think this is new because you have your... You have a couple little moments with two of our guys right there. Have to hold our balance. Nothing crazy. Everyone does their role well. Beautiful. Yes. Texturized, individualized attitudes like that that you see from our main feature. It's a testament to his strength and in, in just fundamentals and foundation in ballet. Like, all of them have a strong foundation. But his is so strong that whenever he chooses to stylize it, you see it so clearly as a stylized choice, not as a, can he really not extend? Because sometimes you can look at someone and you're kind of like, I don't know if they can do it or not, and I think they're compromising. That is a straight-up stylized choice we're seeing. We love it. Black Swan, oh my god, that position at the end was so crisp. The a la seconds were fine. The drone coming through, I wonder how scary that was. I hope they talk about it comes out of it. Really nice, beautiful, Devlapay. 
Yes, the sustains. Really nice choices. I don't mind the corsets really that much at all. I do wish that we had different feather choices. Possibly that maybe like a sleeve and it had like a mesh or something along those lines. I think that would have been cool. I don't know. I see why they were going for it. Maybe not have the collar up, but it was just a collar down I think would make it a little bit easier. And But you can't really pin it because you, it's just skin, right? So... I love that. So we've already kind of seen this touch on this before. Yeah, the stains on this is really nice. And then right there, the clarity on the arms, so the fact that we had the drone pan around like that, and you hear where their arms are going so clearly on the percussion. It's really nice. Da -da -da. This was the part. Yeah, he stuck out in a fantastic way here. Yeah. Oh my God, it's because of his, it's because of his flexibility and strength. Guys is gorgeous. Ugh. Partner work is fantastic here. Oh my god. See so both of them doing it on both sides. I love that too. The turn. I'll bring the black swan. Ugh, swan. Every time, man. Oh, it was I think what was that? A ripple or like a add-on? Uh, so it goes in the two, uh, there was, there's two other lines in this V. Now, because our main feature is kind of right over here, it does feel like this line makes sense and this line feels a little bit out. I don't know if it's because our feature's not in the right spot or if these guys are too far over on stage right. That would just be an interesting note. So subtle, though. Like, I think this one out of anything would probably be the hardest to grade. I think with contemporary, it'll be pretty easy is how it feels to me. Um, but here, I can see this being very competitive on the promotions and demotions because it's way harder to catch honestly in the because everyone's cleaner here if that makes sense I, I guess it could be how they operate on set it can be easier on the judging but from the video alone it's 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 a hard catch which is a good good concept the leap god leave the attitude oh! yeah sote i'll bring the black swan and they're folded over beautiful come on God, this is so good with the leap and the assist in the back. So I actually love the fact that you have your leaders right there, like that, you know, there, and then you had your your angel swan, and then you had your devil swan right there, and then you had like another two that happened with the devil swan earlier, and then you have these two here. Like I really like how they're choosing to feature everyone. It just makes sense. Fly high, love that. The double tour, double tours, man. We can never get rid of them. If sh I wonder if they made them audition, can you just show me a double tour? You'll make it. Like I swear, because I can't do a double tour. Yes, just the back attitudes. Oh my god, that torso tail was gorgeous with the assist and the feathers. I think my one note I would prefer there to be feathers even in the back, not just in the front. It does feel like how they rigged the stage because it looks like a stage, right? But this is a backdrop that they put up, which by the way, fun fact, depending on the theater, I don't know how Korea works in America and schools a lot of times. you There's a certain type of rigging that has to exist on your backdrop or you can't put it up. It'd be illegal. It's very fascinating to talk about. But here, I don't know the rules, but yeah, this is, this is like probably a professional grade backdrop with a certain type of like tassels and and attachments that go and calibrate to this bar and then there's probably a mechanism they have that's rigged up to the front part that is dropping this when it is and we see i see this quite often um in nutcracker a lot of people have mechanisms like that that drop snow for the snowflakes or the snow angels right and so here i think that's my one no i personally wish it just depends on the theater how much how many different wings they have and how many different um lines of rigging they have will determine that I do wish they had a secondary one closer to the back where we can make it feel more saturated for this moment but that's more wishful thinking I wasn't there I don't quite know what the logistics are but I it this makes a lot of sense where they're at it's on stage you know I think that's also another thing they're dancing on Marley they're not having to dance on an industrial muddy drippy floor and they're not outside using concrete you know it's a palace right but I think they were the most comfortable in their space for filming because it's most calibrated to the footwear they wear and the technique they do in the familiarity of the environment I think there's a lot of those components in play on this too we have to factor in the break of dawn gosh look at those look at those elongés look at the porta bra that porta bra guys is gorgeous it is so simple simple doesn't mean easy but the captivation of our angel swan is divine the black swan he owns his part so well 
And then I just noticed, yeah, the dancers now are in black. They're not in white. Oh my gosh, I love how we ended up going the opposite way as our dancers. Do they end up doing a detriné or what do they do? No, they just did like a little compass turn and then they just did like a little rond de jambe to finish in the back. And then they frolic away and then we have more of our other dancers. And look at his stylized equivalence of like the dying swan ending pose. I love it with the still extra breath in it. Look at these. It's the M-A-N-E-G-E, the manige, right? Love that. Oh my God. I wonder if they slipped, but they technically went around and then they probably exited it. Whoa. They exited off of their respective wings. Super cool. Oh, wings. Let's talk about that. Wings. Not wings here. Uh, the sides of the theater stage, like when you're on stage, there's those curtained areas where you see dancers disappear, come in and out on. We call those wings. So, so sorry. I, just, I don't know why I've never mentioned that. Yeah. I just made it sound like we all knew. I'm so sorry. Anyway, but uh, yeah, when our Devil Swan comes in, his intensity is amazing. Commitment to character. He did exactly what he needed to do in the audition process because if he wasn't committed, I bet you he would not have gotten selected because that was a big note one of our, uh, one of our coaches or mentors gave him back in the jump on the auditions. He has to use his face more to sell a character. He has zero issues with that. I love this role on him. Everybody fits their role so well here. You know, I would say this Angel Swan, I was probably more, com it's very competitive. And I'm assuming these two were the ones that were up for the Devil Swan and the other guys were already in the second class. And so they were all competing for the leader roles, right? Would be my assumption. We'll find on the episode. So I love this. They run through. I love the spacing. Yay for spacing on our dancers to allow this to go forth. Beautiful, uh, and then to take him up, and I love this moment where he just got freaking stabbed. The lift is nice, it's stable, it's stoic, and he falls, and he is dead. Look at the feathers, look at the dead, dead, bless the, the, the ballet, the, sorry, the, the, the angel swan, but guys, look, it's gorgeous. Such a nice stylized finish, and I love how we got it there so stable. We love ourselves a good risky pizza on the track. I love seeing that name. It's cool we're here for it. Yeah, and they did choose to, I don't know, do a slow-mo cinematic moment there too. I don't know why we're choosing to do that. These guys are so competent in their craft. Everybody is. I, I always think it's kind of unnecessary when we do choose to go cinematic and speed changing what they're doing because I don't see the benefit of it because it's so chore it's so choreographed, like everything has a place, you know, unless the choreo was specifically made to be slowed down or sped up on camera, which I never assume on these types of concepts, but that could just be me and my assumptions. But I really enjoyed looking, taking a second watch and actually seeing all the missing pieces put in. It feels way more cohesive. And I think this was definitely the strongest out of the three concept shoots mixed with just how it was edited, the dancers, their roles, and who held their own within the respective roles. This one felt the most like appropriate in the scale and how it was ranked here or how they presented themselves in the concept. But that can also come from the fact of how it was shot. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch. I'm so excited to watch the episode. We've finally been able to take a look at all the concepts and I hope you've noticed that I had a fantastic time spending a very, very long time looking at every single choreo draft that existed on the Tombs YouTube for the next upcoming public vote challenge and I hope you took the time to enjoy that. I have some of the most wildest nicknames I think I've ever given <laughs> on, that, on that video so I hope you were able to at least watch some of it but it's fine if not. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm really enjoying this show and I'm just hopeful that Mnet doesn't screw it up, man, because they have that potential always to do it. And I'm just enjoying it so much more than I was ever expecting to, which is what makes it so surprising. So I can't wait to dive in with you guys over on Patreon. I have a group chat where we get to talk about all this stuff, share your thoughts. You don't have to be a member or paying member to be a part of it. You just got to have a Patreon account. You guys know me. I know you. I'm Jess and I will catch you on the flip side. Bye.